Welcome to the uh, NFL playbook. No, CSU and CHOP have not gotten the Rennell Zellweger treatment. We are two different people. I am Luke Lewison, John Ball of Oil. Um, you probably know my fantasy growth piece that I put out there every once in a while. And the other friendly face you're looking at there is Brett Hartfield. Kill a bee. Brett, say hi to the people. How's it going, Grinders? So apparently we are the change of pace back for Roto Grinders here. So we're going to step in and talk a little football with you. Uh, I thought we'd start, Brett, by going back to a happier time. Uh, week six. Week six. Cleveland was at home against Pittsburgh, and they were generous with the touchdowns. Ben yeah. Tate got two touchdowns. Isaiah Crowell got a touchdown. Terrence West was conspicuous by his absence, healthy scratch. And since then, it has been uh, – yeah. they've had – Seven running backs go. All three of them were active in week seven. And then Tate and West in eight and nine. And one of them, over nine lines, or seven lines, has gone over three yards of carry. What do you make of this this week? Uh, well, I mean, obviously every every uh, running back has kind of left the door open. So uh, with no true running back taking a hold, uh, this just seems like a hands-off type of situation uh, for our Thursday games here with the Cleveland run game. Uh, it's obviously Terrence West's time. He's going to get the bulk of the carries. Uh, but you know, it's like, can I see Ben Tate vouching or, you know, grabbing some touchdowns from him, vulturing touchdowns? Yes. Uh, I just, I don't know what's going on in Cleveland. So, uh, more than anything, it's just a, a hands-off situation for me. Yeah. And even if, even if you started West and Tate and they were on the one yard line, couldn't you just hear that music, and it's Isaiah Crowell. He's coming in with a steel chair to steal your touchdown. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no okay. doubt about it. Like, I mean, Isaiah Crowell uh, was the most effective running back out of this exactly. trip. There's no doubt about it. Like, you you look at any type of stats, Isaiah Crowell per touch, most effective running back. The reason why he was shut down was due to ball security. So uh, if they decided to give him zero touches last week, then – I'm not going to even look in this backfield. I mean, uh, I just, yeah, I, I don't I don't want anything of Tate or Terrence West. How many times do you think they can look at 1.6 yards per carry, per carry before they say, all right, I say, are you, are you sorry? Say you're sorry. Now go get the ball and run for more than two yards on any one carry. All right. Right. Uh, um, all right, on to the next subject. Yeah, it's always darkest before the dawn, right? That yeah. was dark. Yeah. Um, Maybe that last week we saw the dawning of a new uh, scenario there in Cincinnati. Yeah, Jeremy Hill about- went off, uh, pretty much went full Hulkamania, ran wild all over the Jaguars. Right. Uh, this week I think there's no Geo again. So uh, do you hear that sound? Is that the real American? <laughs> I am a real American. You see it happening again? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt uh, since, he, since he's got a great run offense uh mainly behind that offensive line uh you give the rock to jeremy hill you give it to geo they're gonna produce it doesn't matter who's back there uh this is this is just a really good offensive line um and now you know it's interesting right you got you got aj green coming back last week and didn't look fully effective but now what does uh, aj green fully effective you know in this offense what does that do to the run game does that open it up does it I think it really helps out. Uh, it, it should help out uh, a box being stacked, right? I mean, there's no uh, no safeties coming up to do any type of run defense. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, th- I think I think uh, no no doubt Jeremy Hill stays effective with all of his carries. Um, he's also not bad out of the backfield catching the ball. So uh, yeah. he's he's a dynamic he's a dynamic. Uh, receiver and running back uh, both ways so yeah thumbs two thumbs up here I could throw a little cold water on him um before he ripped off that 60 yard touchdown he was 17 for 71 you know and then he rips off a 60 yarder and then he ices the game with six for 23 on the next series like if he doesn't break that one it's a good game he had a score before then but it's kind of and the other thing is Cleveland and Cincy run it uh the sixth and seventh most so, right. like, did you see that game just shrinking down like George Costanza after he's in the pool? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do see this game being a, you know, it's it's the Battle of Ohio, right? So uh, I can see this kind of being a slow game. And 
a very run happy game on both sides. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I'm loving Jeremy Hill. Um, I, I assume I'll be buying a little piece here and there uh, with him. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't think we need to worry about that. I mean, unless the only reason why I would not buy him is if uh, Gio has a miraculous comeback here and is now going to be playing on Thursday, but yeah, doubtful, but we'll see. Right. Um, it, it is possible that since he would throw the ball, like a hundred percent of the runs is maybe, maybe not. If they throw it, you know, obviously AJ Green, second game back, maybe a little more healthy. I think at different times during his injury, he said he will not be a hundred percent the whole year. And he's not coming back till he's 100%, and he came back. So, like, you right. can solve that mystery. I don't know how that math works. But he's kind of not the only one that's struggled because of injuries, right? Because Megatron had some injuries. Um, Brandon Marshall had a good game when he was, like, we didn't think he was going to play on a Monday night. He's been kind of injured. And then Des Bryant is, like, dealing with secondhand injury, thanks to Tony right. Romo. They right. all seem to be back. They all seem to be healthy-ish. I don't know about Romo, but – uh, what do you think? If one of those four guys, one of those four studs is going to break out this week, who you got? Okay. Well, I mean, let's just break down those four guys. Uh, so uh, let's just start with the Thursday game. You got A.J. Green coming. Uh, you got Cleveland's Joe Hayden there, right? You would think, oh, let's not buy wide receiver one. Let's not buy wide receiver one there. Uh, but Cleveland and Joe Hayden have not been very good against wide receiver no. ones. Uh, I mean, and you can see what Antonio Bryant has done in two games. He's gone over 100 yards both games against them. Uh, he just has not been the same guy there. So uh, A.J. Green, yes, he's definitely uh, – I, I wouldn't mind rolling with him here. Uh, short slate coming off an injury, kind of worried about that. But, uh, you know, I you got to love the talent. And, you know, Dalton's not the same guy without without him in the lineup. Also, Stafford, not the same guy without Des in, or without Kelvin in the lineup. So, uh, you know, it, it's an interesting dynamic with a lot of these guys starting to get healthy, the 2013 class of wide receivers. Um, you know, Kelvin, Kelvin gets a, a Brent Grimes cornerback that's, you know, very underrated. Uh, well, he's actually well, shut down. Underrated. Yeah, he's definitely shut down some really good wide receivers. So. Um, I would kind of tread lightly with the Kelvin. Dez, Dez, I have like a little minus mark next to Dez only because of his quarterback. You know, you got the Brandon Whedon factor there. Um, but then Brandon Marshall, I mean, Brandon Marshall, the Bears are going to have to, they're going to have to be on their game to beat the Packers. So um, no doubt do I expect them to be coming from behind and no doubt do I expect the, the ball to be in the air quite a bit there. So um, yes, I can see it being a Brandon Marshall day. Um, you might want to check out the Packers defensive backfield. They've uh, been dealing with some injuries there. Um, don't know exactly who's going to be healthy uh, in the cornerbacks uh, and safety uh, area. But, uh, yeah, check that out before you roll with a Brandon Marshall. But, uh, you know, if, if I have to pick a guy, I'm going to pick A.J. Green, I think. Yep. Me too. Uh, one of the things that uh, goes on there is Dalton shows really profound home road splits and they're playing at home. So that's one right. thing in his favor. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, the, the Muhammad Sanu uh, golden Tate thing, both number twos that were like phenomenal without their number one there. Um, right. I think Tate's the better receiver and I think he's more likely to stick, you know, keep value with, uh, with uh, Megatron back. So well, I think, I, I think with you with AJ, I think AJ is the number one there. Um, but remember, I think Brandon Marshall had a pretty good game against the Packers uh, a couple weeks ago. So I could see right. him. I could see him with seven, eight receptions. I don't see him going for two hundred yards. But right, a lot of mouths to feed in Chicago. Um, but yeah, Detroit, Detroit with Golden Tate. I mean, yeah, I agree. I think Golden Tate's a solid number two to have in that offense. Uh, because if you want to throw the safety over on Calvin Johnson's side of the ball, you know, you can see what Golden Tate did. You know, so uh, no doubt. I have confidence in uh, Golden Tate's uh, second half of the season here, even with a health, healthy Kelvin. Um, you, you know, I, I, re I read on Roto World that he's excited to get back. He's ready to, you know, he's ready to hit the ground running here uh, coming off a of bye week. But, again, you know defenses are, are playing for Kelvin Johnson. They're not planning for Golden Tate. So uh, that means safety help over the top, and that means uh, that means a lot of looks for wide receiver too. That's true. 
Um, well, that kind of brings to the end our, our day today for the NFL playbook. People might not know that we're both from Wisconsin. So one quick pointer to add for Golden Tate, even if it's an interception, he can still catch it for a touchdown. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. All right. See ya.